we have to divide the garden into two. So the title is a watchman to guide your garden. So we have two examples of garden. The first one is your heart. The first one is your heart. We've uh, said this many times, and um, I know that you've heard many ministers of God also preach in this direction. So it's not, is most of what I'm going to say is not what you've not heard. But we need to also. Need to. I believe there is a side that I have not heard that I know that God is going to bless you today. Genesis 2, chapter 15 is going to give us the first example of the garden. Genesis 2, 15. Give us the first example of the garden. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. To dress and to keep. So the first garden, and I know I know that you believe you believe in me that man is three. So we're talking about the position of man, the position of man here. You know, in the beginning, God referred more on the hidden man. Just like right now that the outside or outer man is more important to us, but to God, the hidden man is more important to him. The hidden man. The hidden man is even the main man. The hidden man is more important to God. That's why the word of God is spirit. So it's the hidden man saying this realm of the spirit that God always talk to. As you are listening to me now, this word of God which is spirit, it is your eating man that is receiving it. All the five senses are just a channel for the eating man to receive. So, you are two that I receive. As you are receiving from the house outer man, the inner man also is receiving through the outer channels.
So why the, why the Lord is talking about the garden? The way to the garden and the tree of life. These three things are in man. The way to the garden the garden and the tree say the way to the tree of life. God sent the cherubim to, to guide the way to the tree. So it is your spirit man that receives the word more than you because that is the man. So the garden of hidden is within you. The garden of Eden is within you. So, the Bible says, and Lord God formed the man. It is also the hidden man that God is forming. See, when your hidden man is formed and is made, you physically, you just play along. You are alive. It is what comes from within. Strength comes from within. When God is forming your hidden man, your physical body is is okay. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't grow more or grow less. When we're talking about the maturity, it doesn't affect your physical body. Even anybody that sees your house and they know that you're already mature. So, God is referring to the man of the heart or the hidden man or the inner man, depending on the way you see it in different versions, uh, different versions and different uh, verses of the Bible. The Bible called it he did man of the heart. So that man is in the heart. I used to tell people that your heart is the realm of God. Your heart. I'm not talking about the one that is pumping blood. This one is spiritual. That's why no scientist or no medical doctor can see the healing man. Because it's healing. Is of sin. He is there in the presence of God. So you are first a watchman to guide where your hidden man stays. So you here that I'm referring to is I'm referring to your physical being because it is what you watch. What you hear, what you do, that will be a either a blessing or cause to your to the place that your hidden man dwells. In Psalm 91, Bible says, "He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High." Shall abide under the uh, shadow of the Almighty. That verse is, is, is referring to both the outer man and the hidden man. Hallelujah. So Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, God is more referring to the hidden man. That's why both Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, they are more spiritual than physical. The first time you ever um, the first time that God I mean, 
their physical man trial having the awareness of the, uh, the environment was in Genesis 3.22 when God banished that hidden man from his presence the first time was when he heard from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil then physically he realized that he was naked then they banished him out in Genesis 22 out of that garden so your hidden man was banished out of the garden so your physical man was banished out of the garden but your hidden man heads so at that time your hidden man has come and you know become one with your how time I'm referring to you physically on the ground or on the heart as how time I just want to define that part so that every time I use how time more you discover that I'm referring to the parts of you that we can see which is you right now if you come here now I can only see your you as a physical man I cannot see you as a hidden man you personally cannot see yourself your hidden man you cannot see your hidden man probably the only time you can see your hidden man is when you sleep and you are having a day dream and that's why you can see yourself you are sleeping but you are far away in a realm it is your hidden man that is traveling or you see yourself far away in uh, like my wife this morning she said she saw herself somewhere this morning she had a dream and saw herself that is a hidden man Your hidden man travels. Also, if the enemy wants to kill a man, the physical man is sleeping somewhere, but they will call his hidden man because it has to do with spiritual transaction or spiritual transportation. Hallelujah. So, and the Lord took the man, this man here, you know, God is spirit. So the garden of hidden is spirit. Garden of hidden is where your man lives, dwell. So the garden of hidden is your heart. They call it the man of the heart. The man of the heart. The man. By calling the man of the heart. What is the for scripture that is close to that? Hospital 3 4. Hospital 3 4. Please allow you to be attentive to this teaching. This teaching is fast. And I don't know why I'm going to this installation this morning. I just want to quickly pick on uh, the garden of God as we have just in the Bible. First Peter three, chapter four. He said, 
but let it be the hidden mark of the heart, in that which is not corrupting, even the ornament of the meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. I even like how verse 3 puts it. But verse 3 gives us the outer man and the inner man. He gives us these two examples. Say, who's okay? Can I start from verse 1? To know where the scripture is, so let's start from verse 1 together. Likewise, ye wives be in subjection to your husband. That if any obey not the word, they also be without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives. Why? They behold your chaste, chast, chast conversation coupled with fear. Whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold, of putting on a apparel. This is the this can only be done on the outer man. But said, but let it be hidden. Let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of the meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. So, in first hospital, the hidden man is has been Walked on. People believe that because man is a spirit, as it is, there is a version of man that is spirit, then he doesn't sin. No. If he doesn't sin, he won't eat from the tree. Even let me tell you, most of the decision you make affect the hidden man before it affects you. All your decision, all your imagination, those imaginations are the hidden man that's hiding them. Sometimes you are talking to yourself. Who do you think you are talking to? <laughs> you are talking to the hidden man. Or let me even say it is the hidden man that is even doing the talking. But to you, it will be like the thoughts. But to the hidden man, is doing the talking. The hidden man is more active than the outside outer man. So the Bible, this is what I want to bring out is the Bible calling the hidden man of the heart. Because the heart is the garden of Eden or the garden of God. The garden of God is the heart. So if I ask you what is the definition of the garden of Eden, or what is the another description of the garden of Eden, your heart is the garden of Eden. So, and the Bible is saying, Proverbs 4, that you should guide your heart. The reason you have to guide your heart is so that you can guide yourself. If you don't guide your heart, Meaning, if you don't guide your garden, which is what we're talking today, two ways a watchman can guide uh, the garden. So, we are giving us the first example of what the garden means. The garden is your heart. Your heart. So, your, gar your heart is the garden of. Eden. The garden of Eden is your heart. Your heart is the garden of Eden. And the garden of Eden is your heart. You see, this garden of Eden, God was once in it. And because I can still tell you that God is still in it because your heart is a realm to God.
Your heart is a realm. The Bible says God made the heavens and the heart. The heaven and the heart. You know, it's two, this is the word heart, H, that starts with H, and the word heart that starts with He, they have the same pronunciation. So when I'm using the word heart, I believe you should be able to pick what I'm trying to say here. So, when God created the heavens and the hearts, where, does, where was He? He was in His realm. He was in His realm, which is the heart, H. Your heart, or the heart that starts with page, was the realm of God, or was what the Bible calls the highest heaven. Because heaven also has height. Just like the heart, we can see, we can say the highest heart is the heavens. So even in the heavens, they still have height. That height is what is called heart. Height is what is called heart. H H H E A H T H. So I say, guide your heart. This is a, this is a version. Let me say this. Um, like God divide this so much realm and brought it upon the heart. Or let me say, God extend. The Israel into the heart called the Garden of Eden. And God is saying you should guide because anything you do there will get to me. I can see it directly because there is no demarcation between it's still the Garden of God. Whatever they can extend it to is still the Garden of God. So when God created the heaven and the heart, God was in his own realm called the heart H. So every man that was created, or every man on heart, God's uh, place uh, of dominion is extended to every man. Every man that is on heart. As long as you are a man, the realm of God is channeled into you. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I don't want to spend much time to. So, where did that's why they call it he did man. This man is not in the heavens and the hearts. This man is the outer man that is on heart. But the hidden man is not either in heaven or in heart. He is in the realm of God. Till today, till I'm talking to you, God is not in the heavens or in the hearts. God is still in this realm, but he, he comes higher to, to the heavens, to the soul, or to the heart, to man. He, if you want to enter into the heavens, he enter through the soul. If you want to enter on heart, he will first enter through the soul, first to the heavens. And to that soul, it will enter to the heart. That's why they call the soul as the head. The firstborn. Because God needs to enter to his firstborn before he can enter into any man. So now your the heart H, I believe you are following. The heart H is not the house of God, it is the office of God. 
The house of God is the, the house of God. Said, Jesus, I am going to my father. He said, My father's house, that's the scripture that I want to pick, are many mansions. So the father's house. How am I going to this connection today? Okay, let me just spot it from there. Okay, let me see. Father's house is your tabernacle. So now Father's house is, if you see the tabernacle of Moses, is stationed in the wilderness. But the whole wilderness is called Christ. Or so let me say the whole wilderness is called the kingdom of God. The whole wilderness from where they enter into the wilderness from Egypt starts. That is, immediately they put the first steps. That geographical location is kingdom of is the son or kingdom of light. That is where kingdom of light starts from. Light covers all the places. But you can see that the tabernacle of Moses is on that geographical land. So let's go back to the scripture. Guide your heart. So, two places called the garden of hidden. Number one is your heart. The garden that is of God. This is the garden that comes out of God. Everything comes out of God, but this is the first thing that comes out of God. The garden of God. Or the garden of Eden. Okay, let me just use this. You may not know where we are going to come to this kind of teaching again. The garden of God is where? It's a little bit it's, it's, it's not on earth, it's in heaven. The garden of God is where Lucifer was trained. But the garden of Eden was where man was trained. So you can see, it's still the same extension of the hearts from levels upon levels. Man, the garden of Eden is where man was formed and to be made but the garden of God was when Lucifer was formed and made but it's still the same extension of the realm of God and it is the realm, it is in the realm of God that God is enthroned his own uh, kingly uh, throne is Seated. Halloween. So I decided to say it quickly because of we may not know when we are going to come back here. But you see the same exception. Call it the, all of them is still the garden of God. But to uh, differentiate where Lucifer was trained from where man was trained or was formed. We call it the garden of God, the garden of Hallelujah. But it's still the same. The Bible says, Yeah, many tabernacles in hell. So we have a tabernacle that man is formed, where angels are formed. Hallelujah. But I believe the one where man was formed is more high than where angels was formed. Because man was created in the image of God. Angels were not created in the image of God. So the one that was created in the image of God will be formed more. His formation will be tedious. It will be tall. It will be rough. You can see 
I want to put more. I, I don't want to, but this is what I'm perceiving in my heart, in my spirit. Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29. Twenty-nine verse thirteen. He said, "I will." Um, Jeremiah twenty-nine. Twenty-nine thirteen. He said, "And ye shall seek me." It is it was God that was talking. So it is because he dwells in the heart. The heart is his realm. That's why the hidden man of the heart can seek him, God. He cannot seek him in heaven or seek him on earth. It's just that his will is. In heaven. But to first seek God, I mean, to first do God's will, the first thing is to seek Him. If you don't know God, you cannot rule as God. The first thing is to know God, then He will, he will give you responsibilities. To have dominion upon. But the first thing is knowing. You can't bring somebody from the house island, put him on the seat to start ruling, uh, or you know, to start ruling a particular geographical location. When you've not trained the person, the training part is about knowing. You say, and ye shall seek me and find me. When you see me with all your words, heart, H. When you want to seek me, you want to seek me through your location, through your realm, your heart. Is a dwelling place. Where God dwells is in your heart. So if you want to find God where he dwells, you have to find him, choose that same your heart. And this 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 the discerning spirit is like uh, the spirit of man to watch. So let's begin to pick from the title. You are a watchman to guide your your nation. Hey, God. I don't want to explain the nation like this, but let me. You're a royal priesthood, what? And what? You're a royal priesthood. A holy nation. And people belonging to God. A holy nation. But that is not how I want to explain nation. But all these things are giving me that scripture. I say, ah, where do you want me to go to today now? I don't want to shift. But let's do it like that. It's a holy, it's one holy nation. That realm of God is one nation. Ah, I don't want to go like this. Holy Spirit, help me.
only nation. So your heart is big. Everything you ever find. That's what they call the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God is in the garden of God. Or the garden of Eden. The knowledge of God. If you want to find God, or you want to know anything about God, or everything about God, the consummation of it is called the knowledge of God. And now, within the knowledge of God, we have the riches of God's glory. The riches. And what does God means divination? So, you can see, if you ever want to grow, you start growing from your formation. Then to divinity to be made. The making of man is, see, when man is made up, that man has become a divine man. Divine. Because God is divine. When they say God, when they say, when they say God is spirit, yeah, God is spirit, is spirit to walk. The workings of God is what is, is the spirit of God. What spirit does is to come and walk in you. So the spirit of God, so when you say God is spirit, those that must serve him, you serve him when he's walking. Everyone that God created has a place called office and place called home. The office of God is his realm. The house of God is in you, your tabernacle, your body. So the heavens and the heart is the house of God. And I can also call the heaven and the heart the most holy place and the holy place. Don't let us go there. I'm trying to. My spirit is. My spirit wants to say more, but I'm trying to come back because of time. Because of time. But the reason I'm saying this thing is to know how important your heart is. I'm not talking about this thing that pump blood. No. Even if I still want to relate it, I will relate it because life lives in the blood. But the blood of Jesus is spiritual. It's not this physical one in your in your in, in your body. It's spiritual. But with this one, if you know how this physical blood works, without this physical blood, you cannot even live. You cannot be walking. Cannot be alive. All part of your body, bones, everything is there. Veins, arteries, everything is there. But if the blood is not there, forget it. That's why if you want to kill a man, you either shoot his head, which is like a, a processor controlling all signals that passes through the body, or they shoot his chest where the that pump the blood, that trans, transmit the blood, that you know, that makes the blood to flow. These are the two places. If you shoot a man in the leg, he's still alive. Shoot him in the shoulder, he's still alive. But that two parts. Because what makes the blood the blood the the the, the, the heart to pump he also received the signal from the brain. The brain is the mind. But the brain is still not the mind. This is a part of the brain. This is a part of the mind. But both of them are, they are integrated. You cannot really separate it. But separate them. They are one. 
So the house of God, the house of God is in your body. In your body will, your heart. That is where the house of God is. But the office of God is in the heavens and the heart. That's why he created the heavens and the heart. But see that heaven and the heart. I think I will miss it. The office of God is the heart H, the garden of hidden or the garden of God. The realm. That's where his seat is. That's where when he want to rule, that is where he rules from. He rules from behind the scene of the heavens and the heart. So it's, that is where his office is. But his, his house is in the heavens and the heart. The heavens and the heart is also in Israel. That's why Genesis, when we read Revelation 1 16, says, In him. In him who? Jesus. The heavens and the heart, everything that we created, either the heavens and the heart, the, 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 the fullness of the heavens and the fullness of the heart, everything that has to do with the heavens and the heart is created in man. Man. When God is referring to the heavens and the heart, they are not this place where we live. Even if you can understand where, as the outer man is living in a realm called the heart. He's just giving a description that also the inner man or the eating man is also living in another realm on sin. So if you are as you are living in a, in a realm that you can see, you're, you are still also living in another realm that you cannot see. And the reason you cannot see that realm is because that man living there cannot be seen. He called it the eating man. The Bible didn't say the man of the earth. It said the eating man. You yourself, you cannot see where that, where you dwell within, is unseen. I'm not saying spiritual, I'm saying unseen. Unseen realm. Unseen realm is deeper than the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm called the heavens is uh, situated in the unseen realm. Because when God created the heavens and their heart, he created the heavens and the heart to sit, especially the heavens to sit in the uh, garden, in the realm of God. I want to use realm again, because if I use garden, I've, 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 I've reduced it to the parts of that realm where man is. But I'm talking about the totality of the office of God. The office of the Queen of England is the is in, in her palace. But when she wants to go home, she leaves the palace and go. But if she wants to walk, if she wants to walk, she will go on her throne and sit and begin to rule from there. So the the kingly position of God when he exercised dominion. So he exercised dominion over the heavens. The heaven that's over the earth. So that heavens come from where the dominion of God is. So I'm saying the heaven sits. So the heaven that we can't even see how big it is. Is also small where God lives. So when Bible says the heaven is my, is my throne, it's not talking about where the angels are. It's talking about the highest heaven. He now said the heaven. Is, God said the heaven is my throne. He's not saying the, he's, he never. The Bible never said it is in the heaven that my throne is. Because most times that's how we normally interpret it. Say the heaven is my throne. You know, if you check um, um, say Hebrews chapter four, he said the uh, he said let us come to the throne of grace, 
show of gifts. Grace, grace. This is true of grace. Throw that cup of grace. So it is said, the heaven is my throne. It's like he's sitting upon the heavens. He sits. He sits is upon the heavens. So if the seat of God is upon the heavens, then where God dwells is your heart. So you should know the reason why you have to guide. And the way to guide is with your physical senses of your outer man. Whatever you watch will, will find expression and pollute that heart. That's why when, when you watch two more things, maybe you are watching and Holy Spirit kept quiet. Begin, you kept watching and you begin to lose your peace. Why? Why do you think you are losing your peace? Because Holy Spirit is the governor of the God, of your garden. Is the governor? Is the teacher? Is the guardian? He guide it. He 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 he, he guides you. He is the Holy Spirit is to come and maintain you. And he's doing according, he's bringing things from God to you. So, if Holy Spirit is bringing things from God to you, and you are bringing things from your outer man to your man, that would be a conflict. It would be a conflict. There would be a, like an opposition. You are watching something that is not good. And sending it to the man, Holy Spirit is also uh, uh, watching and bringing it to that same man. Of course, the only thing that will make Holy Spirit to be happy is you are reading your Bible. As you are reading your Bible with your heart, man, and you are sending it to your your hidden hidden man, then. Holy Spirit will also begin to bring those things and begin to interpret to you from God. So is the hidden man is in between the outer man and Holy Spirit. Is in is within. Guide your heart. Holy Spirit doesn't need the spirit of the Sabbath. He's the one, he's the custodian of the spirit of the Sabbath. So he will give you so that when you are watching things, you begin to discern that mm, this is, I need to stop it. I need to stop it. But the reason you can't stop it is because even if you start watching that wrong things, another spirit has come and it will hold a path. Maybe a negative, a one part of your will and begin to sit on it. This is tell you the reason why you should not stop what you are watching. So you need to pray and cast out those imaginations. Guide your hearts. Your heart is, is, is it's an extension. It's not, I don't want, I'm trying to explain that's why I'm using the word extension, but I just want to know that your heart is the realm of God. It's an unseen I'm not talking about spiritual. You have unseen Because the Bible would have said the spiritual man of the heart, see the hidden man. So, from the unseen realm, the spiritual realm is even a little bit visual. <laughs> As in to God, it's visual. But the physical 
heart is more visual. It comes from the heavens. Hallelujah. Guide your heart. And the spirit of discernment is to give is giving you to watch, to be a watchman. Watchman. See when that one is done, then let's go to the second one. I think I'm able to explain Genesis 2 